clinical trials in pancreatic cancer have been um, famous for being negative. In fact, if you look at the major clinical trials that have resulted in drugs that we brought to the clinic, uh, I would uh, count maybe five clinical trials that prospectively um, tested a, a drug or a drug combination and then it resulted in uh, either approval by the FDA or our adoption in our daily uh, practices. Uh, and opposite that, there were many clinical trials, phase three trials with thousands of patients and millions of dollars that were negative. Uh, at this point in time, if we're thinking of what is the next clinical trial and what, what to do, uh, I think that if we can find a way of moving into immunotherapy, if we find the right um, targets, the right way of doing it and having the right drugs putting together, that will be an interesting area to go. Because if it's working in other tumor types, it's a shame to think that it's not going to work somehow in pancreatic cancer. So that would be one area which I would be interested in. Um, another area which has been uh, gaining a lot of uh, attention is, uh, is trying to do clinical trials in patients who have tumors that have some defects in DNA repair. So basically, these are patients who have tumors that uh, cannot uh, handle the, uh, uh, the insult they get with chemotherapy, like platinum compounds that damage the DNA, and our bodies, our cells can immediately fix that damage. But there are tumors that cannot do that, which is great, which is great for me, because if I identify a patient who has such a tumor, then I can go after it uh, with some newer drugs, for example, PARP inhibitors, etc. So that's another area. But I can tell you that our, that area has already been um, very busy with uh, clinical trials doing that, but it will be interesting. Um, if I find drugs that can target the stroma, the, the, the cells and the material and everything which, which is surrounding the tumor cells, if I can do that, then again, that would be another set of clinical trials. But there is a clinical trial now looking at pegylated um, uh, hyaluronidase, uh, the PEG-PH20, which is combined with chemotherapy. So those trials have already started. So that's an area which is uh, currently ongoing. The bottom line is that we need some good biology to drive our clinical trials. We've done a lot of clinical trials on an empirical basis, and they turned out to be negative. And that really challenges a lot of times uh, our, uh, our, uh, our statements that every patient is going to a clinical trial, because people will say, well, and patients will say, we read about clinical trials, but a lot of times they were negative. Uh, so to counter that, we have to do clinical trials that are really based on good science and good chance of the trial being positive. And also not jumping into what we call phase three trials with 600 patients, but rather doing small clinical trials that show some uh, improvement, which is really very noteworthy, which is worth taking into a clinical trial. Just to give an example, recently there was an article on a drug that targets uh, macrophages. Uh, specifically, they target a a receptor CCR2, which is on macrophages. So these are bad cells. So macrophages are the bad cells that populate a tumor, and they're all the bad things about drug resistance. They, they don't help us to kill the tumor cells, etc. And they also help the tumor to progress. And there's a drug that has been tested recently in a very pilot setting, like a single arm, not randomized, and it showed that it can improve the outcome of patients locally advanced unresectable disease. So these are things which now will go into, a into a, the second phase, which is a randomized phase two trial. So we need to have some good initial read on activity before we jump on randomized trials because we owe it to our patients. We have to do the good trials, the good drugs, drugs that have a good chance of working rather than jump into clinical trials.